KRCG 13's Megan Lane joins us live from outside of the police station with the latest details. Megan. Kermit, that's right. I just spoke with Fulton Police Chief Steve Myers. He did confirm that Emil's body was found in Fulton earlier this afternoon. He cannot, however, say for sure if it is the body of Carl DeBrody. DeBrody was reported missing one week ago today from a group home on Claymine Drive. Now, Myers says the body has been transported to Columbia for an autopsy, which will hopefully determine the identity of the individual as well as the cause of death. Chief Myers says he is running relatively certain it is that of the body of Carl DeBrody and believes the search for the missing man is now over. Myers, though, wouldn't comment on where the body was found or any of the circumstances surrounding it. Myers did tell me his department has served 12 search warrants in connection to the DeBrody case since last week. Myers also said, quote, we followed the evidence and that's what brought this case to a conclusion. He says the autopsy will hopefully be performed tomorrow or soon after. We'll have the details as soon as those become available. Live in Fulton, Megan Lane, KRCG 13. As of right now, we have 243 closures listed on our website, krcgtv.com. We are at the Capitol Plaza Hotel. We're here for Cork, Fork, and Brews. We were downtown Jefferson City for the Jefferson City Mayor's Tree Lighting. But tonight, we have the beautiful Governor's Mansion as our backdrop. In a little more than an hour, Governor Jay Nixon and First Lady George Ann, they will be lighting the Christmas tree. They'll be greeting visitors on the front steps of the mansion. The choir will be singing. Then they will count down and light the tree. The Jefferson City JC's Cole County Fair kicks off. KRCG 13's Megan Lane is there to preview the attractions. Megan. Hey, Kermit, it is a great night to be at the Jefferson City JC's Cole County Fair. People are starting to stream in now. The opening ceremony, it starts in a little bit at 545, and it costs just $2 for each person to get in tonight. Then carnival rides, they're just a dollar each. We are here at the Governor's Mansion. The Boonville Choir is singing behind me, and in just a few seconds, Governor Jay Nixon, First Lady Georgian, they will be coming to the top of the steps. They're out there now, and they're going to be lighting the Christmas tree. So Kermit Adams and his crew, they aren't finished when the fireworks show is over. They actually have to stay until about two or three tomorrow morning, oh. cleaning up everything. So that's quite an evening ahead of them still. Ryan says his favorite firework is that ghost shell. And those are the ones where there'll be a pop of color and then they sweep with a different color from one side to the other. It's almost like an ombre kind of feel with it. He also says another fan favorite is the crackling willow when you falls down and Everybody goes, ooh, ah, so <laughs> we want to know what your favorite firework is. Let us know on our KRCG 13 Facebook page. If you don't know the specific name, just give us a description, or you can even post a picture. And include an ooh, ah. Yeah. The Heck, it is a little overcast down here, but that's good because it's easier for me to see you. And just, it's not as hot right now, which is awesome. And it is a beach party here in downtown Jefferson City. It's for the last Thursday night of the season. We're here at the Old State Pen, which in previous years has been known as the 47 bloodiest acres. That's because of all the violence that happened here inside the walls of the Old State Pen. But tonight it's going to be a big party. That's because Winona Judd and the Noise, they will be taking the stage here inside the State Pen. Talkin started this Facebook page. It's called Random Acts of Hope. I was 12 years old actually pretty young age. This man who will call Johnny prefers to remain anonymous. He started with using alcohol and marijuana. I was like, okay, what can I do to um, make a name for myself? What can I do that will make me different from everyone else? And I was like, no one in my age is using drugs. No one is in sixth grade smoking pot. No one in sixth grade is drinking alcohol. So. I'll be the stoner, I'll be the alcoholic. He was using heroin, cocaine, and meth by the time he was 14. After I tried weed and alcohol, I loved the feelings that I got from those. So I was kind of like, all right, well, what does this drug, what does heroin feel like? What does meth feel like? What is coke? What does certain pills? So I just decided, you know, I'm just going to go on a journey and see what mushrooms and all these other things are, what the high is like. He was addicted to the drugs and the attention. All these people were coming together trying to help me, and I'm getting all this attention, but I'm like, 
all right, that's exactly what I wanted. So I'm just gonna keep doing that. And then plus on top of that, I was getting the high. I was determined that I was gonna be part of what they call the 27 Club. It is where a lot of uh, old um, rock stars like Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison, Amy Winehouse, they all died at the age of 27. And so I'm like, all right, at 27 years old, I'll still be addicted to drugs. I'll just purposely overdose. Johnny had five stints in inpatient rehab centers and spent five years in outpatient rehab. I knew how to work the system. I, rehabs, I told him exactly what they wanted to hear. Jefferson City Police Captain Doug Shoemaker admits drugs are a problem among kids here. We have um, issues, several issues sometimes with kids abusing, whether it's uh, illegal drugs, illicit drugs, or prescription narcotic drugs. In June 2011, at 16, Johnny shot up on heroin and overdosed at his parents' house. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I wake up to a nurse having Narcan in my arm, putting, like, shooting me up with Narcan. I come back, but I use so much that I fall back into the overdose. And so they had to shoot me up again with another shot of Narcan. But what happened next in his quest to get high, he says, was a new low. I went to the hospital, and the cops didn't check my pockets, neither did the hospital. So I still had heroin in my left pocket, still had a spoon and syringe in my right pocket. I wait till I'm by myself and it's nighttime and they think I'm asleep and I wake up and since I already had the IV fluid bag in my arm, I just stuck the syringe already full of heroin right in. Johnny, like so many other teens, hid the drugs in his house while living with mom and dad. I'd unscrew the plate off of a light socket or a uh, outlet and put my drugs where the outlet's at, screw the plate back on and leave it there. Or I'd leave it up in a fan, ceiling fan. I would lift it up, tuck that underneath, put it back down it's not like anything has ever happened. One of the hiding spots Johnny told me about was under the carpet. He said he'd pull up a corner like this, stash the drugs, and then they're out of plain sight. If your kid's not there, it's places you would not expect in a million years. Vanita Khanna is the Director of Addiction and Recovery at Pathways of the Central Region. We are looking at their shopping patterns, their change in friends, how much time they are spending outside uh, beside their school time. Are they just spending more time in their rooms versus outside? Uh, basically comparing with the baseline, what did change in their life? She says you should pay close attention to your children and what they're doing. They are more creative than us. Uh, that's very obvious. Uh, but most of the time uh, in their socks, we see in their shoes. Um, or sometimes if they know that we cannot basically um, check them as they are coming in in some body parts, uh, they are very open to. While hiding spots are more creative, so are the methods of getting drunk and high. It's called uh, plugging. It's nasty. They'll get a, uh, a syringe without a needle on it, something like that. They'll have the spoon and they'll put the drugs in it, water, almost like they're about to actually shoot up with a syringe with a needle on it. And they'll put the drugs in the syringe without the needle on it and put more water in it. They'll put it up their anus and then shoot the water with the drugs into their anus and it hits them quicker. He says it's a faster high and a more intense one, but that's not all. A lot more kids were doing uh, sublingually, which is having the pill or drug underneath their tongue, let it sit for about 15 minutes, and um, it hits you a lot harder, and then swallow it, and then the rest of the drug goes to your system. He also told me about a drink sometimes known as lean, purple drink or styrofoam. It's a cough syrup cocktail. Promethazine and codeine cough syrup 
with Sprite and a Jolly Rancher. Oh, it's real. It's really prevalent. You just go to the doctor, say, "Hey, it hurts when I cough." <laughs> Kids aren't just doing drugs at home. Johnny says he and others bring them into the classroom. I used to do drugs right in class. I'd be sitting around the class, and the teacher would turn around, and sure enough, I'd just lay a line out of oxycotton or something like that and snort it. He says your kids can fall victim to addiction faster than you may think, especially if parents don't know where to look. I'm sorry, parents, but you're just going to have to step up your game because it's a cat and mouse game constantly. These search for answers to crime rates and strategies to improve community relations. A mid-Missouri sheriff has an idea that's working for his county. It has been six months since Montauk County Sheriff Tony Wheatley took office. In that time, crime has taken a nosedive and community involvement has skyrocketed. KRCG 13's Megan Lane recently sat down with the sheriff to talk about the startling numbers and how others can benefit from his experience. Car turned around, go, go check it. We have a zero tolerance for drugs in Montauk County, and we mean it. It's a safety checkpoint. Can I see your driver's license and proof of insurance, please? During his first six months in office, Sheriff Tony Wheatley created a new policy of safety checkpoints. We map out in, in our policy certain locations within the county and intersections that are uh, high crime, um, high traffic. Uh, we've had burglaries in the past or high reported drug arrests in the past or it's a safety concern of speed, speeding and things like that. At the checkpoints, deputies look for any type of violation, but sometimes they make big arrests. And have a couple officers and we just check for driver's license, proof of insurance and safety inspection. Get everybody slowed down, make sure that we're in the seat belt. Okay, I'll take the second one. Many of the checkpoints, like this one on Highway H in Clarksburg, happen in the middle of the day. It lets the community know that you're out there and that you are checking people, and uh, the bad guys don't know where they're going to be at. In the state of Missouri, David Lincoln, six. Wheatley's background is in drug investigation, and he says that's a role he'll continue as sheriff. We rest on drug offenses, and there's no way around it. What is your biggest drug problem in Montauk County? Methamphetamines, um, by a long shot. It's, I'd say, Eight out of 10 people we arrest for drugs is for methamphetamines. Wheatley says they've determined troubled spots in the community where there have been a lot of reports of drug activity. They saturate the area, start investigations, and try to eliminate the problems. Latham and Clarksburg, we've worked on those two towns pretty hard, and it, it, we've shown a big difference. Uh, the community has come to us and, and thanked us uh, for cleaning up the town. Wheatley and the Sheriff's Department show no mercy when it comes to drugs. We've recovered a large quantity of meth here recently um, and we know that it's here and we'll hunt it and we'll find it. Can I see your driver's license and proof of insurance please? Because of their persistence to get drugs out of the county, go, crime has gone down. Our crime rate so far this year has been cut in half as what was the previous year and our citizen reports uh, giving us information and reporting suspicious activity. He says drug use, yeah. thefts, burglaries, and assaults all go hand in hand. They're all tied together. It's the same people. Uh, they're, they're breaking into the houses to support their drug habit. Wheatley has some advice for the drug users and dealers in Montauk County. You need to heed the warnings. Um, you can try to get some help and uh, we'll be coming for you. In Montauk County, Megan Lane, KRCG 13.